you a better fisherman. Proudly brought to you by our sponsors. The Boat Shop. 3J's Four Way. Pride Rods. Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle. The Lakes Insurance Agency. V&M Bates. Now on to your host, Ranger Diowa Pro Staff, Steve Graff, and V&M Bates President, Kevin Jean. Happy New Year, everybody. It's 2021. 2020 is behind us. Thank the Lord. I am done with that year, and I hope we never see another one like Amen. that one, Kevin. Amen. And uh, Kevin Jean right here, v &M General Manager, uh, sitting in here with me. And uh, Kevin and I, we, we, we've got a bang-up show to start 2021. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody's already sacking them up over there at Sam Rayburn. Yeah, I mean, to start the year off with, very first term of the year, 40, 40 pounds yeah. sugar is caught. You know, now there was a lot of, you know, going into the tournament, everybody was rumors going around, will it take 30 to win? Will it take 30 to win? Yeah. Boom, 40 pound, 40 pound sack hits the <laughs> no, scale. It won't take 30. Yeah. <laughs> it'll take 40. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, we're going to get to that. We've got a great interview lined up, give you all the inside details as to how that happened. And, uh, well, not only that, we've got the second place, yeah, got second twenty-eight place. pound stringer. Yeah, that's so, sad. You weigh twenty-eight I, pounds. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you finished second. In, twenty-eight pounds in an individual tournament, yeah. and you finish second. Yeah, uh, you know, even on even on Sam Rayburn, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. But you know, it can always happen on Sam Rayburn, and, and it's not easy by no means. It is it is tough out there. Neither yeah. one of us was able to fish this right, weekend. Right. We're actually both boatless, boatless right, right now. now. <laughs> uh, Steve's is in the shop. My new yeah. one hasn't came in yet so neither one of us was able to fish but uh talking to several of the guys over there it it was really tough this past weekend as you can see in the sweet 16 results in the outlaw outdoors tournament so uh, that makes what Derek d done even more special yeah it really does and uh, uh again uh, all i can say uh, for for the guy that finished second you better be going to church because <laughs> yeah. i think that's why you probably didn't win if you ain't going to church you probably that's probably why you didn't win but anyway, so we'll get to all that and much more today. Real quick, we got our sponsors for 2021. Everybody's back on board. Yes, sir. We can't say thank you enough for all that y'all have done for our program over this past year. 2020 was our first year on the air. Uh, we're excited about 2021, and Kevin and I are going to kick it off, and we're going to recognize those sponsors right now. The Boat Shop. Mr. Raymond Kidd and his staff take great pride in keeping your boat and motor performing at its best. A certified Yamaha and Garmin dealer offering the best in electronics and the new Garmin trolling motor. Stop by 2410 Sanford Avenue in Shreveport and let the Boat Shop take care of all your boating needs. Give them a call at 318-402-0399 or go to shreveportboatshop.com and also will be a Camus... Uh, Dealership, boat, yeah, boat dealer, boat dealer yeah. uh, here coming up soon. Yep. All right. If you're on your way up from I, uh, Alexandria I-49 heading north, exit 127, you need to take that exit because if you want to go into a great tackle shop, a place that's got some good food, plenty of drinks, anything you could want to continue to hit that road as you're heading over to Sam Rayburn or Toledo Bend, or maybe you're coming up here to fish Red River, or, well, let's say Cane River. Cane River, <laughs> Toledo Bend. want to fish Red River right now, but no. Red River's getting better, so don't count it out. Uh, but anyway, 3J's Four Way Cypress Knee Outdoors is the place you need to go. Uh, again, it's due east off exit 127, maybe a mile is that. And uh, it's right there on the corner. They've got everything from V&M Tackle, Strike King, Gamagatsu Hooks, Pro Lures, uh, you name it, they got it. Rides, reels, the whole nine yards for crappie fishermen. They, they've got the top of the line crappie jigs, everything you could want for all your crappie needs. And uh, and it's that time. Crappie fishing mm -hmm. is, is here. Mm -hmm. uh, Sibley Lake, which is where we're, the show's live from today, they're out there right now catching crappie. So uh, if you're looking for a good mess of fish, check out Sibley Lake right now. It's a good place to go to catch crappie. But 3J's Four Ways is a place to go. You can give them a call. If you're looking for something special, call John Abraham and his guys at 318-238-HUNT. And next is Pride Rods, uh, American made and custom built here in Montgomery, or in Montgomery, Texas. The finest rods ever made by Mr. Billy Kistler, constructed with the finest North Fork composite blank by Mr. Gary Loomis. They carry all your freshwater and saltwater applications for spinning and casting rods. Stop by your local tackle store and pick one up or simply ask about Pride, Pride Rods. 
You can also go online at PrideRods.com or call 832-418-6040 or 936-697-4149. Pride Rods. Another place, once you get over to Toledo Bend, there's a place over there just across on the Texas side called Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle. Make sure you check it out. Stop in there. It's located at 6302 State Highway 21 East of Hemphill. Uh, right there, just across on the Texas line, across from Pendleton Bridge, and uh, stop in with the latest fishing reports. Ben Matsubu, former touring pro on the Bassmaster Elite Series, great guy. Will, got, will give you good information, accurate information as to what you need to be doing. Not just at Toledo Ben, but he fishes Sam Rayburn quite a bit. Of course, he's got a lot of people coming through he gets good reports from. So uh, check it out. Keith's Tackle, again, no place better to go buy bait and fishing tackle at Toledo Ben. Last but not least, the Lakes Insurance Agency, owned by Mr. Clark Moore, who fished BFL this weekend, avid, avid angler there at Sam Rayburn. Uh, the Lakes Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency that has been taking care of Texans' insurance needs for 25-plus years, offering auto, homeowners, boat, recreational vehicle, life, health, and commercial insurance. Uh, Mr. Clark Moore is a local guide and tournament angler who understands your insurance needs and as a boat owner wants to be part your go-to guy for insurance. So give him a call and he'll give you a free quote. The agency is located at 805 Southeast Sa uh, Stallings Suite 3 there in Nacogdoches. Give him a call at 936-205-4467. And on the hotline, the Tackle Talk Live hotline, we've got the one and only Derek Mundy. A guy that's no stranger to the winner's circle. No stranger to Tackle Talk Live. No stranger to Tackle Talk Live, but a guy that definitely knows how to catch him at Sam Rayburn. And Derek, first of all, 40-pound stringer, congratulations, man, on a, on a – what a way to start 2021. Oh, man, it's unbelievable. It, uh, it, ain't even, it hasn't even sunk in yet. Yeah, I mean, to start the year off, you know, your 2021, first BFL of the season, the first term of the season, you know, with 40 pounds. Derek, I got to ask you, I mean, nobody ever knows when you're on 40 pounds or not, but did you have any idea you was on these type of fish? I had a good feeling that I, I was on a 30-plus, but, I mean, nobody, you don't know 40. Yeah. But uh, before we get started, I'd like to I'd like to give everybody a, a shout-out. It's been – it's blown me away. It, yeah. and the people that's called and commented and text, messaged me on Facebook and stuff. It's it's been incredible. I mean, this is a pretty cool uh, feeling, and a, I mean, this is a cool sport. We're just you know we're. I mean, everybody just reaches out and just such good people and stuff. No, absolutely. And, and you know, when you do a 40-pound stringer, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of wakes everybody up in the woodworks there, <laughs> Derek. Oh, yes, sir. It's been incredible. I mean, it, I'm still trying to uh, uh, convince myself it really happened. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Derek, one of the things that I know that, uh, you know, when you when in terms of practice, you know, I've talked to some of the really good anglers over there at Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, you as well as uh, Albert Collins, Todd Castledine, guys that are that are consistent over there. And the one thing I know, even talking to Albert a lot, is that you don't do a lot of bait throwing. You do more idling and looking. I mean, that, that's something I, I assume that's probably how you located this group of fish. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time idling, and and I'll, I'll, I'll look for, you know, like a, uh, and try to find consistency. Like, uh, they move a lot, I feel like, this time of year. And I try to find consistency where they might, uh, hang out or, or hang up you know and and then i'll just i'll try to go back to these areas and um you know just check them at different times on different days and and try to uh, kind of, uh just kind of pattern them a little bit now Derek, but I, I don't do much fishing i mean i think that's really kind of what got me in the in the open i didn't realize that i mean those guys would stick them i had co-anglers you know i'd roll up on the spot and they'd be like man the boater i come in with he's stuck in eight there in practice i'm like golly you know? yeah yeah Derek, that but, group uh, that group of fish though how long when did you find have you has that group been there on and off and i know they move a lot and of course it's a timing deal when you, how long ago have you located that group of fish? And you knew, and, and we all know now. We do enough island. When you look at those gosh, uh, those dots, you just kind of go, "Oh wow!" And, and and was it a group, or was it some individual fish here and there? Oh, it was absolutely a 
group it uh and i located them uh early uh the week of it um okay there was a there was actually a a, a little bitty tiny brush pile that man you just see a little cluster there every every time i'd slip by it's this it's not necessarily a new area because i mean i i have told this all of this like uh, just over and over and over and over and over you know so it's but um this actual group of fish actually pulled up and and was kind of recent and um well i i, I knew by the the uh, way they looked you know i knew that it, it was the sky was the limit if uh if i could just if they'd come if they'd show up to the party you know yeah yeah now is there a certain baits you know Derek, when when you're doing say you're island around a lot uh, are are you of the sentiment of like a lot of anglers, special on the tour and pro guys? I've talked to a lot. Of, they say color doesn't really matter, you know, or maybe it's more about the presentation and the angle in which you're. What what's the key? I mean, if you're not catching these fish in practice, you know, of course you you've probably done enough looking on screen now to realize, okay, that those are big fish just by the size of the dots. But what makes oh, you know? What makes you know? Up. What makes you know what to throw? I've I suck at fishing slow. So I mean I'm gonna reach down and pick up a crankbait first. I mean uh, I just I just can't I try to slow down but I'm probably the worst Carolina rig fisherman in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's hard, especially when you want to go, 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 go. And, and when you can see them on that graph, I'll be the first to tell you it's hard to slow down. It, yeah. it really is. Yeah. Derek, I want to dive more into your day. Uh, and at any point, and guys, I, look, I know there Bass Champs is this coming up weekend. The Toyota Series is coming. There's a lot of large, large tournaments, Derek, coming up. Any information you don't want to give out, we're not, we don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Just say, like, guys, I don't feel comfortable giving that out right now because there's a lot of money on the line, on the line coming up, especially next weekend, twenty thousand, uh, the Bass Champ. So anything you don't feel comfortable giving us, no problem at all. But I, I am going to ask a little bit. Uh, the baits that you did say that you caught them on uh, on your on the FLW reports page, you you said crank, you caught four of them on a crankbait and one on a football jig, correct? Absolutely, an eight XD and a uh, and a VNL football jig. Gotcha, gotcha. What depth are we talking here, Derek? Uh, the actual spot was seventeen. Okay. Uh, I really don't know that depth is really as relative as the. I, I don't know. It's just a, a, in that particular spot, that was just a hangout, uh, just a hangout spot, you know. Yeah. So is it a little early, Derek, for staging fish? Are they thinking about staging yet, or is it a little early for that? Well, uh, it's hard to say because me and, me and my boys smashed them uh, on a rattle trap. Um, he begged me to go out there Christmas Day, and, and like in an hour, we had like 20 pounds on a rattle trap, which this is a, uh, nobody else is on the water and this and that. But I yeah. mean, they, uh, the bait is kind of wanting to be up some, and, uh, yeah. and but it, it's still, it's 1st of January, it's it's a little early, kind of, but it, it's been mm-hmm. a little warm, so we'll, who yeah. knows. Now, kind of take us through your day, Derek. Did this did this all go down real quick, or is it something that you just yeah. had to fish for them? You know, kind of take us through the day and when you finally got that first bite. Did you order a piece at 11 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did get my wife to get me a hamburger from the stove. Oh, there you go. man. There you uh, go. But, uh, no, I, um, I pulled up, and uh, I got in my truck, and I was going to sneak up on this spot, and uh, – I had the, uh, I got the 360 now, had it rolling, and and uh, I actually was just kind of uh, settling in, uh, just kind of coasting up to that spot, and I fired one out. <clears throat> Probably my third cast, and I caught my my second biggest fish. I, um, and I was like, I mean, as soon as she smoked it, I was like, oh, it's a big one. And I hollered back to my co-angler, and I was like, hey, big and get the net. And uh, he hasn't even got up on the back deck and and, and even attempted a cast yet. It was that quick. And, uh, and he didn't hear me. We're all, like, bundled up. We look like the Michelin man, you know, because it's cold and windy. Yeah. yeah. And um, he didn't hear me. And I got up to the boat, and she was green. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 he, so he didn't have the net ready, so 
she just dove real hard and and um I could I couldn't even thumb the uh, the spool. Yeah. I mean she was pulling hard. And I finally got her back up there and he sacked her up. Now you say second biggest. I know your big fish was an eleven pounder, which I want to get to in a minute. Uh how big was this one? Man, to be honest with you, I was thinking nine, but when I threw that other one in there with it, I was like, maybe it's like an eight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was hard to tell. So you I, got, I, I've never had that problem. <laughs> to tell which one's what, eight or nine. So, I so, didn't realize the leather was as big. I, um, it wasn't until after it all went down, I, I just went to check on them, and, and she's laid on her side, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this sucker is, she's deep, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you caught the first one first cast. I mean, did it? I mean, did it knock the school and we catch them in five casts? How did how did it happen? Well, uh, see, I got back on the deck, you know, after uh, he sacked her up and, and the hook come. Uh, it was a, the stars was aligned. The hook come out of her mouth when he netted her. Oh wow! And uh, so, uh, and, and then when I get back up, I stand back up on the deck. You know, I'm looking in the distance from my line up, and I look down. And I see, like, a group of them and about the size of a table Ooh. that was just, they're giants. And I'm like, I mean, I start shaking. I fire this cast out, you know, nothing. And I fire it out again, and I just really get down on that crankbait and everything. And, and all of a sudden, doop, I catch, I catch another big one. And uh, I get her up there. She's kind of barely hooked. And then... uh you know, I'm trying to get the crankbait out of the net. I mean, it, uh, I, I figured it's all going to be gone by the time I got the crankbait out of the net. I was so jacked up, you know. Then yeah. I get back up there, and, and they uh, they was just getting back to that spot. I busted them up. And mm. they was all kind of getting there. And I threw out there <clears throat> probably, you know, a half a dozen casts, and then, and then I catch that 11. And things got real. <laughs> yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. that's and, when and I barely hooked her. I mean, she. I mean, if it would have been for cold water, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have caught some of these. I mean, they yeah. just. It was fighting hard, but they burn out quick because it's so cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to put the you had to put the crankbait down and pick up the old VNM football jig. I'm gonna get a plug in here. There you real go. Quick. There you go. Uh, so you had to throw the football jig in. And that's what you got your fifth one. That's why I caught my fifth one, but uh, this is kind of cool about the fourth one. I actually, I threw out there, and, uh, I mean, it's windy, and my cast went off a little bit, and I, I got clipped, that bush pound got hung up, and I'm like, dang, and, uh, and, and I didn't know, but the new crankbase has got a weight transfer system in there, and I didn't even realize this yeah. until I'm tying up, rigging up, and all that, so I knew I could cast that one further into the wind, because, I mean, I'm having a hard time. Getting it to them, I actually had to move up a little bit because I couldn't hit them. You know, by the time the crank bay got down, it was on, on the, uh, closer to me. But anyway, I got hung up, and I'm like, man, I don't want to lose this crank bay. This, this, I done broke off like like four of them in practice, you know. That, yeah. Uh, and that's my last one. I had more, but it wasn't the, that uh, with that transfer system. And then I thought, I was like, I don't want to go get it. And I'm getting up closer and closer, and they're not moving. And I'm like, oh, my God, they're not even leaving off this spot. And uh, I'm, like, straight over them, and I can see them. And I rip this crankbait up, off, and one eats it. Oh, wow. And I catch another giant. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, was, the motor. it was your day. Oh, yeah. And then I, so then I float back. You know, uh, I'm floating back. I get her in a live well. I troll back over to my lineup and uh in spot lock and I look and and they uh kinda busted up and up off the bottom. And I was like, dang, I reached over, I grabbed that jig and then fired it out there <clears throat> and just I crawled it up to uh where I felt they were <clears throat> and just stroked it and one chalk ate it. Mm. Golly. Now, now, so, Dave, what time is this? What time are we finished? Is yeah. this nine o'clock? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> we, mm, it's, it's probably eight. <laughs> wow! So, forty pounds in an hour. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It, well, and I'm saying that. that it, what boat number was you, Derek? Uh, 
44. So, so yeah, the early a, number a, of a good, a, probably a good little boat run. So it, it, it happened. It, it, Thirty minutes. Minutes. Wow. Good gosh. Now, Derek, how, how important is is live scope for you? I mean, is it is that one of the it, you know we talked about it this past, end of the last season this year? We talked a lot to several pro anglers on, and everybody said you're at a disadvantage if you don't have that on the front of your boat. Is that one of the keys for you now? Has that really helped you out that much? Well, I see a benefit of live scope. I don't actually have that system. I have a 360. Oh, okay. And, and if, honestly, if I had to pick one over the other, a lot of people would be like, oh, he's crazy or whatever. But I think I would choose the 360 because I see everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not in real time. But, I, like, I could see, I mean, uh, I was holding my cast some to let these fish group up. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I started chunking at individuals. But I couldn't catch those fish. They just but when they get around their old buddies, it, it was it was game time. Competition, yeah. Hey, another yeah. thing too. I talked to some guys that said the wind really played a factor in them not being able to get on their fish on the main lake. Because I looked at the fork, it was coming right down the pipe, wasn't it? Northwest wind. Oh, absolutely! It hit me in the face every bit of it. It was. I was out on the main lake, but I. I was able to get there early enough before the waves just was enormous. But oh, okay, I, okay. He got I there, got 40 pounds in the live well, yeah. and was done. That thing is so heavy, it's, it, it won't come out of the water. Yeah, and yeah. I got that long trolling motor. <clears throat> yeah. I can stay out there and pretty much hang with them about as bad as it gets. Yeah, yeah. So, so Derek, did you fish the Outlaw Outdoor Sweet 16 on Sunday? No, I uh, man, I just hit, I wanted to hit the reset button and get out there and look some more. I mean, you can't. Yeah, I, I don't want to just live off of that that yeah. one day and just right. just pray that it hopes again. I got to get back out there and, and and make sure I can keep up consistent weight. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So so did just out of thought here on Sunday, did you idle over the spot? Were they still there? Were they still there? Yeah. No, they won't never see me back there until the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. So I'm assuming I'm assuming Bass Champs next weekend. They might see me there then. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying you're fishing. You're fishing Bass Champs next oh, weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even when I put in and all that got to running down the lake, got in that part of the lake. I didn't even look over there. Yeah. I didn't even want to see somebody uh, see me look that way. I understand. Yeah. I understand. That. Now, now, and Derek, I'm, I'm glad Kevin brought that up. Bass Champs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but. There's a lot of tournaments at Sam Rayburn that do you feel like that kind of opens you up for opportunity for other people to figure out what you're in a team event like that? Uh, I, I, it it, it kind of is what it is, but it, it's uh, the people that's doing this kind of stuff, they realize that not anybody, they can see you catch them and, and uh, most people can't duplicate that. I mean, yeah, it, right. I, no, I that's true. Down to an exact cast looking at a one little scraggly tree off and way off in the distance, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. We've all been told where fish are at, and but when you go there, you can't catch them, but the other guy that told you where they're at can catch them, you know? But you still don't that's want them on the spot and around and messing with them. Know that cause, and, and I had a guy see me catch all five of them. Uh, oh, wow. He, uh, I rolled up on the spot, and he's out kind of on the out away from it, he throws a tow motor up on high, and, and he comes right up there to me. I'm throwing at his boat. Really? <laughs> he's not even in the tournament. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. He's in a dark blue phoenix. Uh, I don't know the fella, but, I mean, he's uh, he's like, he just does circles around me, like, Ooh. and just watch me. He won't even, like, look at me, you know, but he, he's watching what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. What about your co-angler? How'd your co-angler do? Oh, he was, uh, that sucker could sack him, babe. He, uh... <laughs> We had that hiccup first thing that morning, but uh, so he uh, he was on the spot with that old dip net because I mean these fish was barely hooked. I was having to make them react. It, they, it uh, I mean I was I was my hand was like I couldn't even hold the steering wheel when we left. My hand was cramping so bad. So I'm trying to get these fish to react. Wow, wow. 
But did you call angler have a good day? I mean, because you know, let's face it, when you when you're fishing deep stuff on a brush pile, it makes it hard on a co angler. Just like almost as well, bad it's a as one sight cast, fishing. it's a one yeah. cast deal. And Derek just said it. I mean, if you're sitting there, there's a one cast and it's yeah. the size of a table. And angle makes all the difference it, in the that world. That co just yeah. I mean, he can't get in there. And there's nothing nothing anybody can do about that. So I did mean, you try to go shallow with him later on once you had your fish? Did you try to get him shallow and get him some trap fish or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. That guy uh after that guy finally gave up and left, you know, I went up there and did a few donuts on it in the hall butt, and I went to my plan B stuff. I thought I had a really good deal in the grass, and uh, and and I just uh, I got to where the wind was carrying us down. We were just going through there backwards. That spot lock and yeah, but it just uh, I don't know. It's uh, when it was a morning deal. I feel like I don't know the the guy that got second caught him very nice bag. I don't know. If he caught them early or what, but to me it felt like a, uh, it was a morning deal. Yeah. And, well, uh, well, stay tuned because he's coming on right after you. Around, you know, I mean, I, I, I would throw my trap every now and then. I'd catch one, but, uh, and I'd try to get him to throw back in there and stuff. They just, they just wasn't biting good because they were yeah. just slapping at my trap. And, yeah. Well, obviously, because in the outlaw tournament on Sunday, you had 190 boats and only had 10, you know, 10 boats that had over 16. But, right. you know, you alluded to a second place guy, Cameron Madison. We got him coming on right after you here, Derek. But, uh, man, look, uh, congratulations. Heck of a way to start the year, to start the first BFL. And I know you got some, all the big tournaments coming up in January. You're itching to get out there on them. Man, just, again, congratulations to you and best of luck the rest of the year. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. All right. That's Derek Mundy, uh, the winner of the uh, first uh, BFL number one over at Sam Rayburn. And uh, so next, we're going to try to get a hold of Cameron Madison real quick. We want to recognize the Boat Shop, 3J's 4-Way, Pride Rides, Keith Tackle Store over on Toledo Bend, and Lake Insurance uh, Agency over there in Nacogdoches, Texas. So uh, thank you. Appreciate each and every one of you guys for all you do for our program. And now on the phone... A guy that I'm going to toot his horn a little bit. I actually had him on another show that, I, that I'm on with hooking up and tracking down. Cameron Madison, I think, is one of the up-and-coming guys that is on his way up as one of the better anglers in our region. And uh, Cameron, how you doing, buddy? Good. How y'all doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. We just had Derek Mundy on. I don't know if you were listening to the interview or not, but uh, – he kind of told the story as to how it all went down for him real quick. Uh, yes, sir. 40 pounds in basically an hour. Uh, yes. I, I know you didn't have that fortune, but, you know, 28 pounds. And, and I said it earlier in the show, Cameron, uh, did you go to church Sunday? Because that may be the only difference why you didn't want to catch them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did, not I tried to go after him in that sweet 16 Sunday after. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You? I got you. Cameron, look, and we and we talked to Derek about this, I, and I know you're fishing the Toyota there end of the month. And I don't know if you're fishing Bass Champs next weekend or not, but anything you do not feel comfortable telling us, you you know, you don't have to. We understand that as tournament anglers, we're not going to give away something we feel like is a secret. So, but you have to text me and Kevin <laughs> details and GPS coordinates. We'll, we'll get our details later. But anything you don't want to say on camera, don't uh. feel like you you have to. Everybody listening understands that. So, anytime yeah. that we ask a question, you you just say, "Look, guys, I want to I want to keep that into myself. Just feel feel free to answer that way." Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh. First things first, are we talking shallow or deep here? I was shallow. Uh, so every one of them shallow. Every one of them shallow. Now, how much practice time did you put in, Cameron? I drove down there Wednesday and practiced pretty much all day Wednesday. And I, actually, that place I called them in, I caught big ones there in the past. Just not consistently, so I knew they were around that area. And I practice day, first day I get there Wednesday, I pull up in there and – First cast in, I catch one, two, and three quarters. I picked up and left. I was like, all right, these fish are still living here. I got something I can come hit. Uh-huh. Well, the rest of the end, Thursday, I mean, I ran around all the way Wednesday, didn't really put anything together that I had confidence in. And Thursday, that big storm came in, and I didn't get to get on the water but maybe an hour. Yeah, and yeah. I wasn't going to sit out there and fight it. And, and the, wind was, the wind was blowing pretty good too, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And gotcha. then Friday, I got out there pretty much all day again. But going into it, I'm not going to lie to you, it was a tough practice for me. I didn't have confidence. I dang sure didn't think I'd have near what I caught and weighed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, so morning of Cameron, uh, the, I mean, where you caught the two and three quarter, three pounder in practice. I mean, do you run right to that area? Kind of take us through your day. Well, starting off the day, I mean, running over there, I still, even at takeoff, didn't know where I was going to start yet. But I had that spot in the back of my mind. Well, I knew it was a spot that didn't have a whole lot of pressure, and I didn't think I had to beat anybody in there. So I went to another place and started out. And when I got there, I mean, we fished for. I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. My coat caught a short fish, and we left there, went to another place, a little grass stretch, and I could, the water was, like, real. I mean, all that rain and stuff we had, the water muddied up on me in there. So I left there in 15 minutes, and that's when I pulled in. So I caught that two and three quarter and made a lap through there, and I caught my first keeper about, I don't know, a pound and a half. And I was in the back of my mind thinking where I need to go next because I was just about – done with that stretch and I catch a seven and I looked at my coach and said well we'll make one more pass through here and see what happens well we go back and I catch a six maybe five minutes after that and then it all just came together after that and I had my weight within I don't know 45 minutes to an hour in that one little area oh wow now yeah. Cameron were you in a creek or are you on a main lake you know main lake stuff what what was your strategy going in it was just a drain right off the main lake yeah <clears throat> I know those big ones be pulling in, that warmer weather we have. I know that cold front might have shut some down, but I honestly think I had some of those bigger fish move in while I was in there. Mm-hmm. And, and guys, we, we talked to Cameron before, and the only thing he did ask mainly was he did not want to give out a bait. I mean, he's fishing a Toyota event. He feels like he's got a bait locked in up shallow that, that he's – that these bigger fish are biting he didn't want to give that away so we're going to respect that and not even ask that question but i am going to ask counter are, are we is it grass are we around hydrilla yes sir okay yes sir. every one of them come around the grass now how much dragging was you doing uh camera was you dragging it throwing a rig any at all did you have to slow down to catch them or is this pretty much a chunk and wine i will say it was all chunk and wine i slowed down a little bit because i had a couple boats try to get in there on me Mm-hmm. And I would something up different just because, I mean, I didn't want to hook one of them big ones and then they're going to see me and not leave. Yeah. But even after I had my weight, by, uh, it was probably 10, 30, 11, the rest of the day, I tried different stuff just to see if I could get a bigger bite, which, I mean, you know, sounds crazy. I had 28, but I was trying to get rid of the three and a half, and I never could get another bite. But I'd pick up what I was throwing, and I'd catch. I threw back probably four or five, three and three-quarter fish that just didn't help me out. So basically, you're in this stretch, you're just going back and forth till you got, you know, I mean, you caught all five of those big fish in, in how many yards? How many? How long was this stretch? Probably 100 yards. So a 100-yard stretch. You caught yes. all five of those that come in your 28 pounds. Yes, sir. Mm. Wow. Well, it's funny how this, this this time of year, it can just happen so quick, can't it? And when you find them, they're grouped up right now, aren't they? Right, and I was – thinking i heard was listening to Derek earlier he had that one cast deal on his thing and i mean typically this time of year when you find them in the grass you sit there and you can catch them in the same cast almost over and over but right i deal they were more spread out i never did catch a fish back to back cast if that makes sense yeah so so cameron you said you caught them pretty quick there that early did you ever feel like yeah, I, of course you knew you had a shot at winning it, but and you, you said I'm going to look for a bigger fish. Did you ever feel like it's just not enough? I mean, it's January on Rayburn. Uh, it, this is not enough. I've got to have more. Did, you know, how was you feeling at the time? To be honest with you, I caught that last seven I had through back that first keeper I caught. I was a pound and a half, and I looked at my co and I said, "We have a shot at winning this thing yeah. if I can get one more big one." Mm-hmm. And then the whole rest of the day, I'm sitting there looking at the clock figuring out and i started asking him i said you think i got a shot of winning it and i mean we both were almost sure i'd have a top five chance but god i hope so <laughs> I mean, when, you're, when, you're, when you're boating 28 pounds you neark on your way and i can assure you you've got to have in your mind even as long as i've been fishing if i got 28 pounds in my boat there's a good shot i think i'm gonna have a shot at winning that tournament so now i know rayburn's rayburn can be a little different but still right. when you got 28 pounds that's that's a pretty good sack. There's people that fish a lifetime and don't catch 28 pounds. Oh, I'll tell you, at 25 years old, I about had a heart attack when I put that last one in the boat. Now, what was your small fish, Cameron? What was your smallest? Three and three quarter. So you had two sevens, a six. Mm, yeah. 14 and a five. I'm not exactly sure the other ones. I know I had, I had one right at eight, but my scale was a little long because my scale said I had – 27 and i weighed in 28 six yeah yeah so you had eight and a seven and a six yes sir. Mm. 
Okay. What was your smallest one? Three and three, three, quarter. three, quarter. three, and three quarter. Guy, you couldn't call that sucker. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> so you said you fished the outlaw tournament on Sunday. Uh, in yes. how, I mean, did that? I didn't see your name on there. Did, that did, no. did you hit the same area? I did, and actually, I'm kicking myself in the shins for not starting that place. I called them because we had that cloud cover the day of the tournament, and that wind was blowing straight in that drain I was fishing. I think that fired him up, and that cloud cover helped me out. And then Sunday morning, I got in there. We got in there early, and. We fished that morning, had probably, I don't know, five or seven bites, but nothing over two pounds came out of there. Hmm. It was bright, sunshiny days, and we came back in there probably three times that day. It yeah. just never, never happened. Cameron, I can tell you where you made your mistake and why you didn't win it. After you got to the 28, you should have went and found Derek. <laughs> Uh, he was done. He was done. Yeah, Derek was probably eating a burger. He said he was eating a burger around noon already at the dock. So uh, I don't know if he was, yes. wasn't done you much good, but man, hey, dude, congratulations, man. I'm, I appreciate I, it. Hey, well, and by the way, did did we ask what the water temperature was? No, we didn't ask. What, Derek. what was the water temp, Cameron, right now over there? It was it was 54 that day when I was catching them. 54. Did yes. you throw? Are you? And I know you don't want to say exactly what, but did you throw a blade at all in practice? A little bit, but. It didn't really do me very much good. Okay. I just was curious if, if the spinnerbait bite was on a little bit over there, especially with the wind blowing. I thought maybe a blade bite might have been on. Right. right. Well, cameraman, congratulations. A heck of a way to start the year. Yeah. And I know I know you're going to fish all the BFLs. I know you're going to fish the Toyota events over there. But, man, congratulations and best of luck going forward. Yeah, man. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. All right, Cam. Cameron Madison, second place finisher over at the BFL at Sam Rayburn. And, again, I, I really believe this, folks. He is – Definitely one of the uh, up-and-coming anglers in that Shreveport, Northwest Louisiana, our region over here. Uh, he was a very successful high school angler. Kevin's got him on the V&M team, and uh, rightfully so. Just a really good, fine young man and a really good angler uh, that's on the way up. So, uh, Also, real quick, we're going to wrap up, Kevin, the BFL. Go ahead and give us the top five. Uh, so, of course, Derek Mundy in first place was 40 pounds, 10 ounces. Cameron was second with 28.6. Tommy Loving of Cypress, Texas was third with 22.14. Still a heck of a bag. Yeah. Fourth place was Wyatt Franken's. Uh, out Here, of, here's where it starts to drop. Well, Wyatt had 17.11 and finished fourth. Yeah. But here's the kicker to that. Wyatt's co had a nine. Oh, wow. On his second cast of the day, before Wyatt even catches a fish, I'm good friends with Wyatt, shot him a text, and I was like, man, is that, was that your code that caught the nine? He's like, sure was, oh, wow. like his second cast. He wow. said, I don't even have one in the box, hmm. and he catches a nine. <laughs> but, so I mean, heck of a comeback uh, for him to still finish fourth after that happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Hickman of Shreveport, Louisiana, finishes fifth with 17-8. Uh, they paid all the way down to 70th place. Yeah. 150 bucks. Craig Chapman was 70th place of Bossier City with yeah, 915. Yeah, I know Craig personally. Good friend of mine. Uh, and, and real quick, Cannon Bird was six for Marshall. He had 16-6. Chris McCall, the guy, the Crow co uh, in inventor of the Santone Swim Jig uh, from Woodville, Texas. Chris McCall was seventh with 15-15. Richard Ballard from Sulphur, Louisiana was 15-12 for eighth. Dickie Newberry, one of the legendary anglers in our region and fishes uh, basically out of Houston, Texas, a great angler. Dickie Newberry finished ninth with 15 pounds. Bobby Vice from Orange, Texas was 10th along with Travis Franks from Lake Charles. Uh, I think that's the same Travis I know. Uh, at 1411, 53 anglers were between 10 and 14 pounds, Kevin. 53. It, and, you know, we just talked to them too that had 40 and 28 pounds. But when you really look at the weights, this was a tough day. Oh, it, was it was a tough was. day of fishing. Yeah. Uh, I know it was cold and windy. Uh, I would have loved to have been over there. And as we talked about it, we alluded to, we just, we, we, neither one of us was able to be there. But it was, it was tough. It was obvious to see that with these weights. Um, to catch 40 and 28 on a day like that i mean and like both of them said it happened quick yeah. these fish are so grouped up these big ones right. are so grouped up right now and if you're not if you if you're not there on a zach spot to zach time it's just not happening no no uh and real quick kevin he's gonna give us the outdoor outlaws uh uh the, the outlaw outdoors results uh this what they call it sweet 16 but real quick i also want to recognize our sponsors the boat shop three j's four way pride rides Keys to lead them in tackle and the Lake Insurance Agency. So the Outlaw Door Sweet 16 tournaments, for those of you that don't know, it's basically if you get 16 pounds, you get a check. Yeah. No matter how many boats are in there, so on and so forth. 16 pounds, you get a check. And uh, out of 190 boats, they only had 10, let me make sure here. Yeah. 
10 boats had 16 pounds. So wow. it was tough on Saturday, and I believe it was even tougher on Sunday. Uh, Keelan Manuel and Cassidy Stringer finished first place with 20, 2154. Second place was Jesse Floyd and Curtis Floyd finished with 2104. Third place, Aaron Freeman and Kevin Walker, 1999. Fourth place, Corey Rambo, Rusty Clark, 1853. No, Corey. And fifth place, Danny Cross and Brian Lawrence for 1831. So Sunday was even tougher. Uh, You know, them fish up there definitely got to be moving around a lot and just trying to. I think the wind laid a little bit too far. You know, it's just, it's not easy. I mean, everybody sees these weights, and I know a ton of people from out of town. Saw these weights. Oh my God, 40 pounds on Rayburn. I had a buddy that, that lives in Tennessee text me. He's like, Man, I got to come down and catch him. Like, dude, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, everybody ain't catching You're, them. <laughs> it ain't like the weight. The, you know, it took nine and a, nine fifteen to get a check in the BFL. Now, granted, they paid, yeah. uh, you know, 70 places, but still, well, there was 9 two, 15. 230 in the BFL. And out of that 230, there was a lot of guys, and I'm talking some good sticks yeah. from 80th on down that are normally five fish limit guys that do really well over there. There are some names and some sticks that struggled at, at Sam Rayburn. So they're not everywhere. Yeah. It's it's kind of like Cameron has said and Derek has said. They, they found a spot, yeah, and the fish were there. Yeah. It wasn't like they were roaming around catching fish everywhere. So, uh, but anyway, real quick, uh, Bass Cash Bash. PD Vincent has announced his 2021 schedule, and uh, so, and it's on it right now, January 1st. It yep. starts Sam Rayburn. Sam Rayburn is on now till April the 30th, and then all these other well, Louisiana Delta will start February one and run through May 31st, and then Lake Fork. Coosa River, which is a new body of water, Caddo Lake, Lake Eufaula, Alabama, and Toledo Bend and Lake Gunnersville, all those will start March the 1st. So Fork, Coosa River, Caddo, Lake Eufaula, Toledo Bend, Gunnersville, all start March the 1st and run through July the 4th weekend. And uh, so if you, I'm telling you, there's, there's $50. No, no better 50 bucks you will spend. If you're a guy that's going fishing a lot, you're crazy not to be in this. Just, just sign up. It's $50 to enter. You go to yeah. BassCashBash.com, $50 to enter. Uh, ch- there's, I forget how many he tagged on Rayburn. He'll get on to me if I get it wrong. I want to say 200 yeah, tagged on yeah. Rayburn. Rayburn's probably uh, the most pl- the biggest yeah. place he does tag two, the most fish. I believe it is. And we'll correct him if wrong, but I believe it's 200 tagged on Rayburn with a boat tag and a truck tag. Yeah. Every tag is worth $1,500. This started January 1st. Guys, since January 1st, what's day, the 4th? Yeah, yeah. There's been four tags called. Already called. Four tags called. Yep. Uh, fi- and they even show you, he shows you where he released the boat tag. I believe it's the boat tag yeah. at Sam Rayburn. He reached it at Castle Boykin Boat Ramp. He's on and, video. And Go to their Facebook page and you'll see it. He at Castle Boykin, and the truck tag was released on for yeah, Pavilion. Yeah, there you so go. So the two most popular places on the lake. So yeah. if you have not got registered for that. You definitely want to go get registered. Don't be that guy who goes out there and goes fishing and forgets to get registered and catches a tag. That's fifteen hundred bucks. Yes, and and it's just like I said. I mean, and he's not going. To, he wants you to catch these fish. He's not putting them in some corner of the lake somewhere where nobody goes. These are in popular areas, guys. Get out there, pay your money, and you won't regret it. Just a uh, uh, and he just P.D. Vincent does it right and doing a great job with that. So right. it's still to come in January on, on Sam Ray. We'll kind of go through the schedule here. January 9th, Bass Champs next weekend out of Umphrey Pavilion. Uh, January 17th is on a Sunday. That's the Rattle Trap Open uh, there on Sam Rayburn. January 23rd is the Outlaw Team Series number one event. Uh, then the next weekend is a busy weekend. January yeah. 28th through the 30th is the Toyota Series. Big boys. Uh, I know that Saturday is the ABA uh, yeah, ABA South Texas, South Texas Open Series yes. will be held out of Castle Boykin that weekend. And then the January 31st on that Sunday is the Outlaw Outdoors Sweet 16 event. Yeah. So, and all that's going on, Sam Rayburn. Then starting out first week of February, uh, February 6th, the ABA, the ABA one, Solo 150 going yeah. on at Toledo Bend. Uh, that's going to be a big event this year right there at Toledo Bend. So, Toledo kind of get kicked off in February until Sam Rayburn is yeah. just wide and open. And the ABA Open Series, you fish by, I mean, excuse me, the Solo Tour 150, you fish by yourself as a pro against 150 other guys. You're fishing for uh, $20,000. And uh, so, 
uh, for a $600 entry fee. It's a two-day event, and uh, just I'm really excited about that. I think a lot of people are excited about this. It's something new, something a little different, and definitely a little cheaper than some of the other circuits that, that we all know about. So, uh, And you're fishing for 20 grand. So yeah. job well done by ABA on that. Steve, right. I think that wraps us up. Yeah, I, I mean, what a done. first day back for 2021. Uh, congrats. I mean, and thank you to Derek and Cameron. Guys, they don't have to come on. They do not have to come on with us. They do not have to give us any info. It's just something they agreed to do. And, and you know, I want to say thank you to both of them for coming on. Uh, Bass Champs this coming weekend. So good luck to all of you fishing it. And hopefully if you win it, we'll have you on the show next Monday. Yeah. Again, we appreciate each and every one of you. Stay tuned. Every week we're going to try to give you the best of what's going on at Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bend. And uh, maybe mix in a Lake Fork every now and then. So, uh, hey, Keep tuning us in. We appreciate it. Numbers were great today. We reached probably 140 people. Live. I think it live, live at yeah. one time. Hey, and that's not including the guys that are going to tune us in later on after the show is over. So uh, thank you. We appreciate you. Happy New Year. Looking forward to 2021. And if you want to continue to be a better angler, you got to watch Tackle Talk Live.